Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are now starting a new chapter, which is going to look at a different peripheral on the MSP430, and this peripheral handles serial communication. So in this video, we're just going to go over an, a quick overview of what serial communication is, and then think about ways you can implement this, this on an MCU, and then what serial capabilities our particular MCU has. So when you think about what serial communication is, it's to describe it, sometimes it helps to talk about what parallel communication is. So you basically have two types, parallel or serial. And the way to think about parallel communication is where you're able to send an entire word, whether it be you know a nibble, a byte, or 16 bits, and you're able to send it all at once. So the example of how you could do that would be using the digital I.O. system on the MCU. So if you were able to wire up all, let's say, eight bits of port one uh, <clears throat> to some other device and you wanted to transfer eight bits to that device, you could simply just store information into port one out. And that information would go out, eight, all eight bits would show up on the pins at the same time, and then the other device could read it. And then if you wanted to read in information, you could just simply uh, read from port one. And the advantage of that is that you get eight bits of information in essentially one instruction. And so it, it's a, a way to transfer a lot of information. The downside, of course, and we've already seen this a little bit, is that it takes a pin for every bit within the word. And so while you can transfer eight bits at, at, at a time, you use a lot of pins. And so sometimes on MCUs, you don't have a ton of extra pins uh, to use. And so one of the ways that you can get around that is by moving to what we call serial communication. So what you do in serial is you transmit the same information, except that instead of using a, a pin on the device for every bit, you serialize the information and then you send it bit by bit. And by doing this, you can use a single pin or a single wire to transfer the same piece of information. And so this is kind of a graphical depiction of what it might look like. Now, notice that we're talking about, you know, a stream of information. And I drew the clock here to kind of show that in parallel communication, we're able to hit, you know, let's say hit a clock and eight bits pops out on port one. When you shift it out bit by bit, you're going to take eight clock cycles or maybe eight instructions to accomplish this. So that the advantage of serial communication is that you have fewer pins that are needed. But of course, the downside is that it's gonna take, it's gonna take longer to actually get that information out because you're only going bit by bit, okay? So there's advantages and there's disadvantages to this. Serial communication is used a lot in, uh, a lot in cables. So if you think about a USB cable, you know, you're transferring information on there, but if you had a ton of wires within your cable, it might cause the cost of that cable to be, to be pretty high. And so a lot of times in cables, you'll see serial communication. Okay, now let's turn our attention to MCUs. How can you create a serial interface uh, using an MCU? The first method is what we call bit banging. <clears throat> and in bit banging, you essentially just use a pin of one of the ports and you manually tell it to go high or low depending on what you're trying to send. And so you, you can think of it as you're just using like the bit set and bit clear instructions to send out a pattern of information by sending high and low transitions as desired. And you know, we've already looked at the timers, so we know that we can set up timers to create uh, periodic events. And we can see that how we could create a clock that has a 50% duty cycle. Well, if you can create periodic events based on timer interrupts, you can also extend that to sending out pieces of information or for example, a bit within a word of a variable one by one using that same approach. And so bit banging, is, it's quick and dirty uh, and you just basically just, you have to do it all manually though, that's the trick. You have to figure out how to pluck out each bit of the word and then how to, to write your looping structures to go through and send one bit high and you know high low high low 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 high out of one of these pins on a on a port that's a manual way to do it another way to do it is to use the built-in serial peripherals of the microcontroller so what if you think about this just like the digital iso io system is a peripheral just like the timers are a peripheral so is the serial io system 
It is a peripheral, which means it sits here as independent circuitry that resides separate from the CPU, and you can configure it to do a desired behavior, and then you interact with it by sending information to it, telling it to go, receiving information. You can set up interrupts. Uh, you can have flags that trigger, and you can configure this to kind of automatically handle shifting the information out. And this is a very handy way to do it. The MCU that we're using calls its uh, serial peripheral, it calls it an enhanced universal serial communication interface. So E-U-S-C-I, and the E is always lowercase and these four letters are uppercase. So when you go into the documentation, the data sheet, you're gonna see this terminology used. They don't necessarily call it a serial peripheral, it's always E-U-S-C-I. <laughs> now, our specific MCU, the MSP430FR2355, it actually has four separate of these EUSCIs. So it has four serial peripherals. So that's pretty powerful. You can actually set up four of these links that are independent. And they're called this. One, they're called A0, A1, B0, and B1. Okay, and then they always put the EUSCI underscore before them. So that's how you see these uh, referred to in the data sheet. Okay, so you got four of them. Now, the standards that are supported, each of those peripherals can take on uh, multiple uh, standards. And when we use the term standard, what we're talking about is you don't just necessarily shift out the bits, bit zero, bit one, bit two, et cetera. A lot of times when you have a standard, you need other information that goes along with the bit sequence that kind of helps facilitate information flow. So you might have uh, error correction uh, bits, you might have a start bit, a stop bit, you might have a, a standard that has a clock, you might have a standard that doesn't have a clock, you might send bit seven first, or you might send bit zero first. So the standard refers to how the frame, how the serial frame is constructed, uh, and there's three different standards that are implemented on this MCU. The first one is called Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, or the UART, the second is serial peripheral interface or SPI, and then you have inter-integrated circuits protocol or I squared C or I2C. So these three interfaces or standards are built into the serial peripheral. And the way that it works is that A0 and A1 can either be UART or SPI, and then B0 and B1 can either be SPI or I squared C. Okay. Now, when you go to the Launchpad board, these things are kind of sprinkled all over the place. They, of course, do like every other peripheral in the MCU. They share pins with other with, on the on the MCU. So when you look at a pin, you're going to have like obviously it's going to probably have a port bit as one of its functions. But you're going to start going through the list and seeing that oh, look at that. It's also maybe the transmit for a UART or it's the receive for a spy. So it's going to be another function that's sharing the same pin, okay? All right, and then I just point this picture out. This is pointing out where the UARTs are, but they're kind of sprinkled all over. A lot of them are on these pins right here, these pin headers. Uh, some of them go to this pin header and actually will go up to the computer. And yeah, they're all over the place. Now, when you use these, this is, uh, I'm going to show you kind of this concept of how you take parallel information and convert it into serial information. So this is always going to be, this is kind of the generic circuit to pull this off. It's based upon a shift register. Now I'm showing you this as kind of the rough overview of how these peripherals work. This is not how you bit bang. Bit bang is where you just do bit set, bit clear on a, on a pin. This is where you have a built-in circle that circuit that handles taking the information that's in a register and then shifting it out bit by bit. So consider you had like an eight bit piece of information in this parallel register. What you can do is you can configure a string of D flip flops that have a certain number of D flip flops cor corresponding to the number of bits you're gonna send. And you can load the information into each of the D flip flops. And since the Q of this flip flop is connected to the D and the Q is connected to the D and the Q is connected to the D, as soon as that information's over there and you're ready to go, if you start clocking all these D flip-flops, the information will start shifting out. And so it'll go shift, 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 shift. So if you had eight pieces of information that went onto these eight D flip-flops and then you provided eight clocks, it would shift it out bit by bit and it would take eight clocks and all of a sudden the information had been sent out over what we call the transmit pin, which is TX. 
And, th and that's it. I mean, it's quite simple. The D flip flops have a load capability. They also have an enable capability. And then you just shift it on out. How does the receiver work? Well, the receiver has also a shift register, except it's configured differently. It's shifting information in. So in this situation, we have the receive, which is called the RX, and these bits are coming in and you know that the information is coming in. So then you start clocking these D flip flops. They so go clock, 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 and they shift in. So shift, 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 shift. And as soon as you have the certain number of clocks that happened, and this example would be eight clocks, you have all the information. And then what you can do is have a parallel register grab that information. And then all of a sudden you have it in the receiver register. So you took this parallel register on the transmit, shifted everything out, shifted everything in, and all of a sudden it exists in a different register. So that's the idea of this kind of parallel to serial, serial to parallel conversion, okay? All right, so how do we learn about MCUs? So first and foremost, we're gonna start by we learn the standard. So when we look at UART, we wanna spend a little bit of time and understand what is the standard all about? If you don't know the standard, it's hard to, to configure the peripheral or and you have no chance of doing bit banging. So we look at the peripheral or the standard first. Then we decide whether we're going to bit bang or use a peripheral. We are going to use a peripheral in this book. And the reason I do that is because if you can get the peripheral set up and you can look at the information streaming out and streaming in, it makes a lot more sense in terms of how it operates so that when you, if you chose to bit bang later, you could do it more successfully. Sometimes when you try to bit bang right away, you like might forget something that's critical in the frame and then it doesn't work. But when you use the peripherals, they're designed to be operational. So they take care of a lot of the stuff that sometimes you might forget when you're bit banging. So we're gonna use the peripherals and then that'll set up to, for you to bit bang if you want to. Okay, that is it. That is an overview of serial communication, parallel to serial, serial to parallel. And we are off and running. As always, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.